Human beings are fantastic at building things. We make things, we make homes, for example, and what we do is we don't just sit there and say, right, that's it. Leave your homes, don't, for example, put in windows or central heating or electrics. So what we've done is we've improved upon the design, we've improved upon the building process, making it cheaper, more efficient. And we've done that with a whole host of tools. We have tools to build our cars and we improve those tools. So when we improve those tools, we can concentrate more on building a better car. And likewise with your domestic products and of course with your computer. A computer is a tool. And of course what we went from was bits being stored in valves that were switched on and off that were this size into a tiny microscopic piece of metal with a positive and negative charge, making it cheaper, easier and more efficient. And now that we can work with more bits in a smaller space, when there's that little sparkle in the eye of the people that have invented this stuff and they realize the potential of what it can do, then and only then do we really start to see some tools for the people who actually program, for the people that don't want to program in ones and zeros, we don't want that anymore. What we want is a programming language. We cannot make amazing applications that we have today, such as a graphics editor or a video editor or an operating system without a programming language. It just is impossible. It would take decades and if you had a bug in there somewhere, forget it. How could you ever find it? You're in a sea of ones and zeros. So that's not good enough. We now need tools for us. So in lieu of that fact, we came up with programming languages. The reason why we came up with programming languages is because it's more effective for us to communicate with the computer. Think of it like this you have the same subject, mathematics, and you have two teachers, and you have a bad teacher and a good teacher. Now, what makes you go to the good teacher? What makes them good? Is their effective communication, the ability to get their point across in the most simplistic manner? Well, in terms of the computer, I could program in ones and noughts, but is that going to be simplistic when making large applications? No, even though the premise of ones and noughts is simple, trying to structure and build an application using ones and zeros isn't going to happen. I need a language. So programming languages were invented for us and not for the computer. I want to stress that first and foremost. It is not for your computer, but by having a programming language, by giving us this amazing tool and tools, because there are many programming languages, it allows us to make some amazing applications. But ironically, the funny thing is, your computer doesn't understand programming languages. So most programming languages come with either an interpreter, compiler, or a combination of the two such as JIT or AOT compiler. But ultimately the result is the same thing, where it takes your human readable instructions and delivers some type of machine code that your hardware can actually understand. Now also, don't forget there are a variance of different programming languages out there. So let's take a handful such as C, C++, C Sharp and Java. And each one of these languages takes a compiler. And each one is different they have different compilers because the language is different. The syntax, the way in which you write that language is different for every language. So what we do is we have a different compiler for each one of these languages. Now there's another type of compiler that I want to talk about and that is a transcompiler or what most people call a transpiler. What on earth is a transpiler? Well a transpiler takes one human readable programming language and converts it into another human readable programming language. And that may sound really confusing. Why on earth would anybody want a transpiler? Because the input, which is the human readable code, gets output in a different human readable code. It's still not readable by the computer. So why is it beneficial to have transpilers? So consider this scenario where we want to target as many platforms as possible with our program. And we have Windows, Mac OS, GNU slash Linux, Android and iOS. Now, these platforms have, let's say, different technology that we need to use. For example, with Windows and iOS, we need C Sharp. 
with macOS and GNU slash Linux, we would like C++ and with Android, it uses Java. We have some different tools to work here. And the problem with these different tools is the fact that I've got to learn those different tools. Now, even though, yes, they have their similarities, they have their own syntax. That's why they need their own compiler. The syntax is the bit that you write in. It's just the words and the way it's the language is written. Syntax. And when you consider that, you have to remember that you've got to learn all those. However, is there a possible language that we can use that can actually transpile into all those different languages? The answer is yes. The language I'm talking about here is called Haxi. Haxi is a genuine language that you can use and this language transpiles into many other languages. So for example, with your Haxi code, I can write one program and I can transpile it through the Haxi transpiler to C Sharp, C++ and Java. I've only written one program. However, what's happened is the Haxi syntax, the way I've written in that language, has converted into the other syntaxes of the other languages. So it's converted it into the C Sharp syntax or the C++ syntax or the Java syntax. So it simply transpiled it from Haxi human readable code to another human readable code. It has been transpiled. Then what I can do is I can take my transpiled scripts, whether it be C Sharp, C++ or Java, and I can send it through the relevant compiler. So if it's C Sharp, I'll send it through the C Sharp compiler. If it's C++, I'll send it through the C++ compiler. And if it's Java, I'll send it through the Java compiler. So what I've done is I have written one program. I've written one program in Haxi, I've transpiled it, and then I've compiled it, significantly decreasing the amount of syntax that I have to learn. The syntax is the language, it's the way you write in that language. I don't have to learn the Java syntax, the C++ syntax, the C Sharp syntax, I just have to know the Haxi syntax, and then get that to transpile into the other syntaxes. Recap. Programming languages are tools for developers, not the computer. The programming languages need a compiler for that specific language because that language is unique. It has its own syntax. Syntax is the way in which you write the program. It's how you word things in that language. That's the syntax. And a transpiler will simply transpile one syntax into another syntax or one programming language into another programming language, which has its benefits. Please do understand that a transpiler is a compiler, a transcompiler, if you will, but it's a different type of compiler. A standard compiler transforms human readable code into either hex or binary data, which is more for the hardware, and a transpiler will take human readable code and put it into another human readable code from syntax to syntax.